Hi boys and girls, this is uh, lesson 12. You need your activity book open to page 12.2. You need a pencil and you also need your reader. Let me get that. You need your reader open to chapter 13, which is called Mammals and that starts on page 104. The left side of your um, chart here, Mama, mammals, live bearing milk producers, should already be filled in. We filled that in the other day when we did our other reading. Today, we're going to read chapter 13 together, and we're going to write the main ideas from chapter 13. So go ahead and open your reader to page 104, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Aha! Uh -huh. Now we get to an animal group that I really know a lot about. I, Rattenborough, am part of this group of animals myself. I'm talking about mammals. Do you remember the characteristics that scientists use to identify mammals? Hair is one major characteristic. Live birth and giving milk to their young are others. They breathe oxygen from the air using their lungs. Mammals are also warm-blooded and they are vertebrates. So there are several things that we want to write down there from that first paragraph. They kind of review all the characteristics of mammals. So we're going to write down that they have hair and uh, make sure that you stop the video, pause the video whenever you need to, to write down what you need to write down. If you want to pause the video and see if you can write down what those characteristics are from the text we just read, go ahead and then come back and check your answers with me. They give birth to live young. They give milk. to their young, now I'm not writing all of these words, paraphrasing. They have lungs, so they breathe oxygen through their lungs, they do not have gills. They are warm blooded and vertebrates. So those are all the major characteristics of mammals that we learned about in our previous reading and they reviewed it here for us. Let's continue, follow along on page 104. As I read this paragraph, when I get to the end of this paragraph, I want you to be thinking, what is the main idea of this paragraph? Most scientists agree that mammals are the smartest creatures in the animal kingdom. All animals communicate in some way. Dogs communicate by barking and wagging their tails. Cows moo. Some cats meow, others roar. But mammals seem to use the most complex form, forms of communication. Humans use language to talk. They also communicate with their faces and hands. Some apes and chimpanzees have even been taught to use sign language to communicate. So what do you think the big idea is, the main idea from that paragraph? I think it's that mammals use complex, which means complicated, forms of communication. So they're not just wagging their tails. They're not just mooing. Um, we have species that uh, use their face and hands, humans use language, all kinds of different types of communication. We're going to learn some more about that. So mammals communicate in different ways and that's what we just basically wrote, use complex forms of communication. So let's turn to page 106. Again, we're listening for what's the main idea? There are two other mammals that also seem to use an advanced form of communication. In fact, you may not even realize that these animals are mammals because they live in the ocean. 
Dolphins and whales are classified as aquatic mammals, meaning water. Dolphins and whales, like other mammals, do not have gills like fish, so they cannot breathe underwater. Instead, they use blowholes at the top of their heads to blow out water and suck in air. Dolphins and whales rise to the surface of the water and poke their heads into the air to breathe. Whales and dolphins communicate by sending out sound waves through the water. These waves, called sonar, help them find their way through the ocean. The sound waves bounce off objects and echo back to the whale or dolphin. The whale or dolphin can tell the size, shape, and speed of objects and the distance away from them based on the time it takes the echo sound to travel back to them. They also use their sounds to talk to each other. So there's two really big ideas on this page. First is that dolphins and whales are mammals. I think that's important. Dolphins and whales. I'm just going to write that down because we're talking about mammals. So now I've given you two types of mammals. The other thing I think that's important is that they communicate using sonar, which is sound waves, sonar sound. And there on page 107, you can see a picture of dolphins. Um, you might think that they're classified as fish, but they are classified as mammals. Let's turn to page 108. Dolphins and whales also give birth to live young. No eggs needed. They even feed milk to their young. If you study them closely, you will learn that dolphins and whales have hair, not scales. They also have very thick skin. Their skin protects them from the cold and animals that are their predators. You might also be surprised to learn that bats are also mammals. Bats fly like birds, but they do not have the other characteristics that birds have. Bats have fur, not feathers. Their arms have wing-like flaps of skin, but they are not like bird wings. Bats also give birth to live young, and they produce milk. So, scientists classify bats as mammals. I'm going to put down here bats just so that we know that they are mammals. And you can look at the picture on page 109 and see, you can see the fur on its belly there. And you can see um, its wings are outstretched, but it looks like it has arms in there rather than just wings. Let's turn to page 110. Here's an interesting fact. Not all mammals give birth to live young. The duck-billed platypus and spiny anteater both lay eggs like birds and some reptiles, but have all the other characteristics of mammals. Good luck finding one. They are very rare. So I'm going to write down uh, duck-billed platypus. Uh, if any of you watch Phineas and Ferb, you'll see the duck-billed platypus in that cartoon. I love Phineas and Ferb. And then also the spiny anteater. I don't think I've ever seen a spiny anteater. Uh, on page 111 is a picture of the duck-billed platypus, though. Our last paragraph. Mammals have their fair share of odd members, like the duck-billed platypus. But the basic characteristics, hair, backbone, milk, warm-blooded, are always present in mammals, no matter what. And I would like to add to that list, vertebrates. Boys and girls, thank you for listening. Make sure that you have your notes written down and read over them. Reread the chapter. Practice reading for your fluency using those vocabulary words. And I will see you next time.